My name is Heather and my educational giant is Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet. He is known for his work in uh, pioneering education for the deaf. He was born in December on December 10th, 1787 in Philadelphia. His family then moved when he was about 13 to Connecticut and initially he wasn't going to go with them. Um, he wanted to pursue becoming a minister, but health reasons forced him to go move with his family to Connecticut and he attended Yale University. He was a very well-educated individual. At 17, he graduated from Yale with a bachelor's degree at the top of his class. And then um, he went on to pursue a master's degree from Yale as well as a year of law school. And um, he went to two full years at Andover Theological Seminary and where he graduated in 1814. After he graduated, he planned on being a minister and he went home to visit his family in Connecticut and next door, um, there was a small girl named Alice Cogswell, Cogswell and Alice was deaf. As Thomas observed her, he became fascinated by the fact that she seemed isolated and lonely and wasn't able to participate in the other, with the other children in activities and games. And he wondered if, um, she could learn. And so he went over and introduced himself and grabbed a stick and wrote letters in the dirt for the word hat and put his hat on the ground and showed her that the letters represented the word hat. He did this with um, some other words and he pantomimed a book and asked her if she wanted to learn to read. She was so excited for once that somebody was trying to communicate with her. She was able to communicate with her family, but outside of that, um, she just couldn't. So after um, this encounter, Alice's dad, who was the doctor in the area, um, asked Thomas to teach her. And so he decided that that's what he would do. And he worked really hard to teach her, but there was just so much limitation and he just felt inadequate. Um, and her father felt that way too, that these, that her, Alice as well as other children needed a better opportunity. So he asked, Thomas, if he would go to Europe, um, initially to Great Britain, to learn how to educate the deaf. Um, there was a lot of education opportunities for those in Europe at the time, and but nothing in America. Thomas agreed, wasn't quite what he thought he would be doing, but he decided that would be okay, so he went to England. When he got there, he found that there were a lot of, um, it was a competitive situation and they wanted him to pay lots of money and they didn't want him to actually share any of his ideas, but they were willing to teach him. He, he ended up meeting uh, one of the other educators that was actually at a school in Paris and he went to Paris instead where he met um, Laurent Clerc and who was um, a graduate of the school there and learned sign language from him and lots of information. It was taking a long time and he really wanted to get back to Alice in America. And so they decided, he decided to convince Laurent that he could, that they could teach and he should come with him. So they decided to journey back to America and both Laurent and Thomas um, did a lot of fundraising and other things and opened the very first school for the deaf um, called the Connecticut Asylum, also known as the American School for the Deaf. Um, also, the two of them learned, uh, established American Sign Language. Laurent knew French, but not English. And Thomas knew how to speak English, but did not know how to sign. So they worked together to develop what the foundations of what we use now in American Sign Language. Um, Thomas married Sophia Fowler, um, one of his former students from the Academy of, for the Deaf. They had eight children and he served as the principal for their, the school he started um, for until 1830 when he had to retire. Even after he retired, he was um, still a minister. He had been offered big congregations, he'd been offered big teaching positions, but he really mostly just cared about taking care of people, um, particularly in his Christian beliefs. And he remained a minister for a jail and a local insane asylum. Um, after he was no longer able to be principal. He and his wife had had um, eight children and his legacy actually continued on through his children. His son, Thomas, um, was a priest and did a lot of religious activities for the deaf in New York. 
and his youngest son, Edward, is the one who founded Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., the first college for deaf um, people there. It is named after his father. A lot of people mistake the fact that um, because it's called Thomas Gallaudet University that it was um, Thomas Sr. that founded it, but it, it is not. It was just named after, after him. Um, as far as his impact today, um, we actually have come a long way towards meeting the goals that he had 200 years ago. He wanted all students to be educated. He felt that just because a person was deaf, dumb, or blind, that they, they could still learn. They still needed to have the opportunity to still receive education. It didn't make them less intelligent. They just needed a different way to be taught. And so that was what he established and continued to do in his life. Um, today, we have in place the IDEA, IDEA um, Act for D those with disabilities. Um, it includes free and appropriate education, creating individualized education plans, um, and education should occur in the least restrictive environment. Um, at this point, we believe in mainstreaming, which is a little different than what he did. He established a school for the deaf um, where they were kind of segregated in some ways. But at this point, um, although there are still schools for the deaf, these children and other children with disabilities are mainstreamed as much as possible. Um, his impact in my life is actually pretty big. He, um, his work made it possible for my son, who was born with a hearing loss, to be educated. He was able to receive a cochlear implant, and so he actually does not use sign language. He uses spoken language and listening skills. But um, some of my first, the intervention services we used were through the School for the Deaf and other things. And there were lots of opportunities um, should he have not been able to be successful with an implant um, through the schools that were established by Thomas Gallaudet. Um, as far as education goes, he has been able to be educated right alongside everybody else. His disabilities have not prevented education in any way. So that is my educational giant. I wanted to close. I found this really awesome book and because I want to be a teacher, it makes sense and I love picture books. Um, it's called My Heart Glows and it describes one scene from the, at the end when he returned, when Thomas returned from, um, there's the cute picture from Europe with Laurent Clark. And it says, um, finally the two men were at the Cogswell home. Alice burst into the parlor with Miss Huntley. Shyly, she greeted Gallaudet, her eyes darting to Laurent Clark's face. Clark had been wondering whether he wanted to stay in America with its odd customs, but he saw a quality in Alice that suddenly made him sure he had done the right thing to come by coming. Hello, Clark signed to her. Deaf, you me the same, she signed back. What sign will you teach me? I will teach you the sign for love, he replied. My heart glow, Alice signed. So I don't, one other thing I learned while studying this particular educational giant is that it's not just a coincidence that although he had had a plan for his life, he, his family lived next door to a deaf child and that he was inspired to learn how to teach. His impact affected thousands and thousands of people throughout the early years of American history. Thank you.